So now on the screen we have a formula that's used for calculating the product moment correlation coefficient. And I appreciate that when you first look at that equation it looks pretty horrendous. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of the terms and see what it actually means. So first of all we have R which represents the product moment correlation coefficient. And on the top of that fraction we have N which is our number of pieces of data or number of sets of data. We know that that's 5. And next we have the sum of x times y. What we need is a new column where we can multiply x and y together and all that bracket means is those x, y values multiplied together all added up. So let's do that now. Let's create a new column which is x times y. So this column is x, y. x times y. And all we're going to do is multiply our number of staff by our production for each of those days. So Monday we have 22 already circled times 204 also circled our x and y values multiplied together that gives us 4488 next we have 23 times 201 which is 4623 next we have 26 times 212 which is 5512 Next we have 21 times 194, which is 4074. And finally we have 18 times 195, which is 3510. Now remember that what that highlighted term is asking us for is the sum of all of those added together, the sum of x, y. So let's add those up now. 4488 plus 4623 plus 5512 plus 4074 plus 3510 gives 22,207. Okay, if we revert back to our formula, the next two terms on the top of that fraction are the sum of x, which is all of the x items of data added together, and sum of y, which is all of the y items of data added together. So if we refer to our x column, all we need to do is add all of those number of staff up. So we have 22 plus 23 plus 26 plus 21 plus 18, and that equals 110. And adding up our production values, all of our y values, or the sum of y, we get 1006. Now that's the top of the fraction taken care of, so let's move on and look at the bottom of the fraction, where we can see that we have a square root, and then we have two square brackets multiplied together. This is our first square bracket for the x data. And this is our second square bracket for the y data. Now if we look inside the x bracket, what we've got, again, is the number of pieces of data, n, times the sum of x squared. So we need to create a new column so that we can square all of our x values and then add them together. And whilst we're doing that, we can see here that we're also going to need to do that for our y values. We're going to need to square all of our y values and then add them together. So let's do them two columns next. Okay, so x squared, if we refer to our left hand column or the staff column, we need to do 22 squared and 22 squared is 484. We need to do 23 squared, which is 529. 26 squared, which is 676. 21 squared, which is 441. And 18 squared, which is 324. And we need to add those together, which gives 2454. And finally, we need to repeat that for our y data. So 204 squared, 201 squared, 212 squared, 194 squared, 195 squared, and then add them all together. And here are the results for that. So the sum of all of our y squared data is 202622. Now there's a lot of number work there and there's a lot of potential for making errors. However, I believe it's important that you can see where these equations come from and that you have an understanding of how to apply them. 
Okay, so let's plug our numbers in to calculate our product moment correlation coefficient, R. And as we go through, I'll just circle where each of these values are coming from. First of all, on the top of our fraction, we have n, which we've already said is 5, there's 5 sets of data, times the sum of xy. Well, the sum of xy is this 22207 column. 22207. Minus the sum of x, or sum of x, if you recall, was when we added all of our number of staff together. And so circling it here, it's the first column on the left hand side. Sum of x is 110. And sum of y is 1006. That's from our second column there. So we have the top of our fraction. On the bottom of our fraction, we have the square root of 5 times the sum of x squared. Well, the sum of x squared was all of our x squared values added up. So the second column from the right hand side, 2454. Minus the sum of x squared. Well, the sum of x we've already used is this value here, the 110. That's all of the x pieces of data added together. So we've got 110 squared. And in our second set of brackets, we have n again, times, this time the sum of y squared, which is our far right hand column, of 202622. Minus the sum of all of our y's, again we've already used this, the 1006, all squared. Now I'm going to calculate the top and bottom of my fraction separately there. In calculating the top of my fraction, I get 375, nice round number. And on the bottom of my fraction, I get 427.3. The one decimal place. Therefore, my product moment correlation coefficient comes out to be 0 0.88 to two decimal places. Okay, so what does all of that mean? Does that mean that these two sets of data are closely correlated, or does it mean that they're not closely correlated? Well, in simple terms, it means that these two sets of data are closely correlated. Now, a correlation coefficient can only ever have a magnitude between 0 and 1. The closer that magnitude is to 1, the more closely correlated the two sets of data are. Now, if, for example, we had a correlation coefficient between 0 0.5 and 1, we consider that to be a strong correlation. So here we have strong correlation because we're in the higher end of that bracket. If the correlation coefficient is between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, we consider that to be a moderate correlation, and if it's between 0 and 0 0.3, we consider that to be a weak correlation. Now those magnitudes apply if the numbers are negative. So if we have a correlation coefficient between minus a half and minus 1, those two sets of data are still closely correlated, but it's what we call a negative correlation. When one increases, the other decreases. And our boundaries remain the same. If it's between minus 0 0.3 and minus 0 0.5, we consider that to be moderate negative correlation. And finally, between 0 and minus 0 0.3, we consider that to be weak negative correlation. We'll discuss this again when we look at another example, but here we have strong positive correlation. Increasing the number of staff does have a positive impact on production.